All right, y'all. Top 10 brutal torture methods. Oh, shit. <laughs> Fucking hell. I got my girlfriend Bobby with me. I literally have absolutely no idea what the fuck we're about to watch, but it's got me a little scared, a little paranoid. I don't even feel like a jumping around the intro. I mean, jumping around the room intro is necessary. Like, we just hop right into it. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. And then they're trying to set the mood with this shit. Oh, man. Oh, shit. Oh, I don't even know what that is, but Necklacing it sounds sick. is a horrific torture that involves forcing a rubber tire filled with gasoline around a victim's chest and arms, and then setting it on fire. The victim may take up to 20 minutes to die, suffering severe burns in the process. In South Africa, Nigeria, and India, necklacing was a common sentence carried out by angry mobs to punish suspected thieves and rapists in the 1970s and 80s. Brazilian drug lords are also known to have necklace their enemies. Most notoriously, the journalist Tim Lopez yeah. in 2002. After he was kidnapped by local drug dealers, his hands, arms, and legs were severed with a sword while still alive. They then stuffed his body in gasoline-filled tires and set it on fire. Damn. Okay, number 10. The bone snapping ligament tearing torture device known as the rack oh, was one of medieval Europe's thing. favorite interrogation platforms. Essentially, it is a table that has two rollers on either side. The victim's ankles are fastened to one roller and the wrists are chained to the other. A handle and ratchet mechanism attached to one of the rollers is used to gradually increase the tension on the chains, inducing excruciating pain. Yeah. Over time, the sufferer's joints are dislocated yeah. and eventually separated. Yeah. And the horrifying aspect of this torture is hearing the loud popping noise ah, made by snapping ah, the ah, oh, why are we hearing it though what the fuck the that they lose the ability to contract rendering them useless Ugh. but that doesn't rats kill them, will though. do anything to escape yeah. an uncomfortable situation and torturers use this knowledge to their advantage in their sick experiments a pottery bowl filled with rats are placed open side down on the naked body of a prisoner red hot charcoals are then piled on top of the bowl effectively heating up the pot and making it unbearable for the rats the rats only way out is to gnaw into the very bowels of the victim in an attempt to escape the heat in one documented occasion during the dutch revolt in the 16th century a prisoner of war endured this torture after the rats ate through his flesh and scratched at his intestines the hot coals were then inserted into his stomach Ugh, his internal fuck. organs fuck okay that's wild the head crusher is a device that clamps down on the victim's head, smashing it between a metal plate and a rounded iron cap. As the executioner gradually twists the handle, the victim's skull is slowly crushed. Bone fragments from the skull can puncture the brain, causing spontaneous muscle spasms and, of course, brain hemorrhage. Ah! If the person inflicting the pain wants to torment the prisoner even further, he could strike the metal cap with an iron rod, sending echoing pain throughout the person's body. In most cases, the victim is killed. Killed, but not before the jaw had been crushed and their eyes had popped from their sockets. Okay. The Tucker Telephone was an electroshock apparatus used in Arkansas Tucker State Prison in the 1960s and 1970s. Inmate doctors would use this torture device on unruly prisoners. The device worked by placing a ground wire around the big toe of a prisoner while clamping the hot wire to the person's genitals. Oh, fuck. The wires were then hooked up to a telephone that had been modified to send electric shocks. As the phone was being cranked, piercing electrical currents were sent throughout the prisoner's body. In prison slang, a long distance call was a series of electric shocks in a row. Any inmate that passed out? out from the experience would be splashed with cold water and shocked again, intensifying the agony. Damn. Seems a bit harsh. Similar to the rack, the German chair is a form of torture often used by the Syrian government against the rebels. When a detainee is captured, they are placed in a metal chair. Their legs and arms are secured to the seat, while the back of the chair is pulled back and down toward the ground. This Fuck. causes severe stress on the spine, Fuck. neck, and Fuck. other limbs, Fucking often hell. causing permanent damage. One man who managed to escape the Syrian torture cell claimed that they stripped him naked and hung him upside down in the chair for 8 to 12 hours a day for four days. 
days. He says the pain was so excruciating that he begged his captors to kill him. He still has uncontrollable twitching as a result of the torture. That is f fucked. <laughs> That's Flaying, fucked. also known as skinning, is an old torture that dates back to 883 BC. It involves different methods to remove the skin from the victim's entire body. The most common form of flaying is to use a knife, inserting the sharp blade just below the chin. <laughs> the cuts start at the face and work all the way down to the toes. In some cases, the skin would be taken off in small sections and be performed slowly until completely done. What's left is a still living person with exposed muscles, ligaments and bones, but the face skin still intact. A person could live a few hours up to a day after the skin removal process. Another method involved being severely sunburned and then having the skin peeled mm. off. Lastly, captives would be placed in large cauldrons with only their heads sticking out. Then hot scalding water or oil would be poured inside. Okay, that's the worst. I think that's the worst one. By far. Yeah. That's For sure. wild. That's fucking wild. Impalement was and is one of the most gruesome ways of dying imaginable. The arms and legs are strapped to the ground by pegs, rendering the person immobile. A large oiled wooden stake is gradually forced into the body, usually into the anus. They made sure that the stake wasn't too sharp or the victim might die too rapidly from shock. There were many instances where victims were impaled through other bodily orifices or through the abdomen or chest. Infants were sometimes impaled on the stake, forced through their mother's chests. When the pole was then raised upright, the victim was left to slide down the pole with their own weight. It could take the victim up to three days. Oh, fucking hell. Torture dates back to fucking hell. I couldn't even look at the screen, bro. What the fuck? Vlad the Impaler. Bram Stoker's 1897 novel Dracula was inspired by Vlad's name oh, fuck and reputation. No. Recorded instances of impalement are oh, as recent fuck as no. 1919 during the Armenian genocides. Oh fuck no. There's more. I thought we were Dragon done. Bull fuck. an ancient Greek torture device that also doubled as a demented musical instrument. Naked victims were placed inside of a large hollow brass bull statue. In most cases, the prisoner's tongue is cut out with sharp metal shears before being shoved into the empty bovine statue. The torturers would then light fires underneath the bull and burn the person inside alive, raising the heat gradually. The screams of the bull's occupant couldn't be heard because the thick metal cap Casting acted as a sound barrier. The only opening was through the bull's mouth that let out smoke from the person cooking inside. A series of brass tubes were located toward the front of the bull that would resonate the sound of the muffled screams of the tongueless victim. Depending on the intensity of the heat applied under the statue, the prisoner could survive anywhere from 10 minutes to several hours. The Judas Cradle was a pyramid-shaped seat that a prisoner would be forced to sit on. The victim would be raised over top of the structure with the aid of ropes and a harness. As the person is lowered down, the top of the pyramid would be lined up to enter the anus or the vagina and cause unimaginable pain and discomfort. The feet would be bound together so that if one leg moved, the other one would too, enacting more pain. The subject is tortured by intense pressure and stretching of the orifice, eventually succumbing to tears and muscle tissue. Torturers would prolong the interrogations by raising the victim off of the seat overnight and then continuing the torture the next morning. If the victim didn't die from shock, exhaustion, or impalement, they could have died from infection, as the Judas Cradle was rarely clean between tortures. Okay. Fuck. Yeah, I knew that was gonna be wild. I knew that was gonna be wild. Nastiest ones to me. The peeling skin one or whatever. The fleshing, yeah. And then the one after that, where they stick that fucking shit through their whole body. Impalement. That was fucking, holy shit. Because I'm thinking like the brass bull, okay, that's bad. But like, that's only for a few hours. They said that fleshing could last like days. And like they could put you out in the sun or boil you. They got they got too many different like variations of how they could fuck you with that shit. Oh my god, I can't even imagine not having it. Oh fuck, that would be nasty as fuck. All right, um, leave a like if you guys enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Um, comment more ideas I can do with my v. Tweet them.
Instagram. I'll leave her links in the description. Uh... <laughs> yeah, this is not the time. <laughs> I'm out. Oh, man. That was nasty as fuck. Tell me something you wear around the house that you'd never wear in public. Um, condoms? <laughs> you said condoms? <laughs>